Hola amigos, que tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with a Spain news update and details on Spain's new motorway toll system have come to light, but more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to the people that supported the channel by buying merchandise and a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your support. Now, let's get into the news and as I said, details on the new motorway toll system here in Spain have been released. And as we can see here, the government launches its motorway toll plan, first a vignette and then pay per kilometre. Driving for free on Spanish roads is going to end. In just 24 months, vehicles crossing motorways and highways will have to have a vignette, a kind of sticker that will be placed on the front window for which they will have to pay. A system of cameras will monitor that the sticker is in force. Later, in the medium term, the government plans to introduce a charge per kilometre travelled. This is the scenario, according to sources in the government, which the Ministry of transport is considering with a view to the implementation of the so-called pay-per-use of roads which is committed to Brussels in the recovery plan and which is associated with the receipt of European funds. The department in charge of infrastructures wants to start negotiating with the sectors involved as soon as possible. So there we go, fairly clear. Driving for free on Spanish roads is going to end in around two years time. As a new toll system is going to be implemented because as we saw in the text, that's what Brussels wants. Spain has a lot of money that it needs to pay back to Brussels and this is one of the ways that it's going to do it. Now on the topic of the economy, and in particular the post-pandemic recovery, apparently things are not going according to plan and the Spanish economy is a bit sluggish at the moment. And in this headline from the Financial Times, we can see Spain's delayed recovery, why it became a Eurozone economic laggard. As the EU's biggest economies bounce back from the coronavirus crisis, one lags far behind, Spain, the country, the worst hit in Europe by the economic impact of the crisis last year, is making much less progress than other Eurozone members in regaining pre-pandemic levels of output. Right now, there's cause for concern, said Alicia Coronel, chief economist at Singular Bank, a Madrid-based private bank. After 18 months in which countries' economic performance closely tracked their struggles with the pandemic, the Spanish experience represents a decoupling of sorts. Spain has some of Europe's lowest infection rates, but that does not appear to be providing an economic boost relative to its neighbours. The recovery has been delayed compared with other countries and compared with what was expected, said Raymond Torres, chief economist at Spain's Savings Bank Foundation. He cites three factors, faltering household consumption, rising energy prices that have contributed heavily to inflation, and a delay in the use of the EU's 800 billion euro recovery fund. Spain is one of the fund's main beneficiaries, with 140 billion euros of grants and loans over the next six years. So the economy here in Spain again taking a long time to recover from the crisis if we compare it to other Eurozone countries. The same thing happened after the financial crisis back in 2008. The Spanish economy took a long time to recover and now it's happening again, unfortunately. And again, giving fuel to the critics of this government and the party that they represent, that they just do not know how to run the economy. Now, Mallorca's international airport dominated headlines at the weekend after a plane from Morocco en route to Istanbul was forced to land there and a group of passengers hopped off the plane and fled the airport. As we can see here, police are now probing plane diversion. Mallorca police on Saturday arrested 12 people after a group of passengers fled a plane following an emergency landing. Palma Airport on the Spanish holiday island of Mallorca was forced to close for nearly four hours on Friday night due to the incident. An Air Arabia Maroc plane from Casablanca to Istanbul had been diverted to Palma de Mallorca due to an apparent medical emergency. When the ambulance arrived to take the allegedly ill passenger, who was reported to have fallen unconscious due to diabetes, to the hospital, he and around 20 passengers bolted for the plane's door and ran onto the tarmac. Spanish media had reported, citing police officials, that the diversion was a deliberate attempt to help people illegally enter Spain, but the authorities played down the suspicion. So a bizarre series of events taking place at Mallorca's International Airport at the weekend. Now it's been reported in recent days that Spain's employment market is recovering and there are now professions here in Spain that don't have any unemployment at all. And as we can see from this headline, the list of professions in Spain where there is no unemployment, from truck drivers to web developers. A total of 32 provinces in Spain are now registering a level of employment above that which they had before the coronavirus pandemic, with Almeria and Castellón leading the way by exceeding their February 2020 enrollment figures by 5.8% and 4.6% respectively in October. However, some sectors are having problems filling vacancies. 
the return to normality brings with it an increase in the demand for products. It is estimated that one in three drivers will retire in the next five years. According to these calculations, between 10,000 and 15,000 professionals will be needed in Spain. Other profiles in high demand are those known as digital bricklayers, profiles of technicians, engineers and workers trained in vocational training. They are in charge of carrying out the digital transformation sought by the European Union. It is estimated that around 400,000 workers in this field will be needed. Technological talent is increasingly necessary, a sector that could boost the Spanish economy by 7%. So there we go, plenty of work for truck drivers and web developers here in Spain. So if you fancy doing one of those jobs and you've got the skills to do so, what are you waiting for? Spain needs you. Now we've seen in recent times how COVID cases in other European countries are again on the rise, but here in Spain that is currently not the case. And apparently the world awaits the normality of COVID in Spain due to the high vaccination rate. Vaccination in Spain is a success story that many countries would like to see. A target population with a 90% vaccination rate, no social protest, and no mandatory vaccination has made Spain the focus of the pandemic. If Spain, which is back to normal, except for the indoor mask wearing mandate, does well, the path out of the pandemic will be clearer. This week, an opinion piece in the prestigious medical journal The Lancet asked whether Spain had acquired the desired herd immunity in light of an incidence rate that seems to have stabilised at around 50 cases per 100,000 inhabitants. Spain, with its large-scale reopening, is living in an experiment whose results may have an impact on the whole world. Currently, the relaxation of measures, the opening of nightlife and travel between communities have led to a scenario very similar to what we could call the new normal and yet the infection figures have remained stable for weeks. This fact is evidence that we could be facing a herd immunity achieved by this high response to vaccination, says Pedro Bullón, an epidemiologist. So there we go, and according to that article, Spain is a COVID-19 vaccination success story that a lot of other countries would like to be. And the bigger question is, has herd immunity now been achieved in Spain? Now let's have a look at a summary of the health situation in Spain and we can see that accumulated incidence rate sitting at 53.77. There are 1,793 COVID patients hospitalized around the country and there are 386 COVID patients still in ICU. Now it's a bit of a slow news day here in Spain today. So slow, in fact, that one newspaper is asking what is the best tap water in Spain and what is it like in your city? According to the latest report by the Organization of Consumers and Users, which contains an analysis of the water quality of more than 60 municipalities, Burgos is the Spanish city with the best tap water, followed by San Sebastián and Las Palmas de Gran Canaria. In the case of the city of Burgos, the Ocu highlights the scarce presence of minerals as well as its zero lime content. With respect to the city of San Sebastián, the Ocu highlights its very light mineralization, while the water of Las Palmas, according to the Ocu, stands out for its multiple origins. However, the trend changes when the cities with the lowest quality tap water are Palma de Mallorca, Huelva, Barcelona, and Ciudad Real, among others. For this analysis, the Ocu based itself on factors such as the characteristics of origin, hygienic quality, and possible contaminants, among others. So there we go, a big thumbs up for the tap water in Burgos, and a big thumbs down for the tap water in Palma de Mallorca. And now the question for the community, what's the tap water like in your part of Spain? Let us know in the comment section below. Now let's take a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from Tellboy. Hi Stuart, live here in the Campo, 70 kilometers north of Malaga City. We have a blackout here on a daily basis, lasting from a few seconds up to an hour. Any longer than they are usually repairing power lines. Yeah Tellboy, thanks for the comment. And there were a few other comments from people saying something similar that they regularly suffer blackouts here in Spain. These comments come on the back of a comment made from the president of Red Eléctrica here in Spain, who the other day said that Spain has the best electricity system in the world. That's right, the best electricity system in the world, according to her. And if that is the case, why are so many people suffering blackouts? I think it must have something to do with the fact that there are two Spains. We have urban Spain and then we have rural Spain. And of course, in urban Spain, in the big cities here, people don't often suffer blackouts, but it seems to be the opposite the more rural your area is. So in urban Spain, yes, there is a good electricity network, but when it comes to rural Spain, it doesn't seem to be the case. One here from Catherine in California, there is a serious water shortage. Yeah, Catherine, thanks for the comment and referring to a 
comment that we saw the other day that Spain is more comparable to California than it is to Florida. And another example of how similar these two places are is that currently here in Spain there is also a water shortage in the south of the country. And according to all reports it is quite serious with 4.3 million people affected. So droughts in California, droughts here in Spain. One here from James, buy Spanish produce, no worries about the shipping crisis. Yeah James, thanks for the comment and that could be one way to get around the current supply crisis that we have by local. We saw the other day how the Beer Association here in Spain said that there's not going to be a shortage of local beer but there might be a shortage of imported beer. So you might have trouble getting your hands on an international brew in coming months. So let's try and buy local products and hopefully we can avoid the crisis. One here from Aviva, after watching your videos this year, I have decided to retire in Portugal. Spain seems too politically problematic and complicated for newcomers. Thank you for your efforts to explain the situation over there. Yeah, Viva, thanks for the comment and sorry to see that these videos have put you off retiring here in Spain because the political situation is too problematic and complicated. But unfortunately, that does seem to be the case. Spain is a very complicated country politically and difficult for foreign people to understand how things work here. And all of the complications and problems, as we saw at the beginning of the video, mean that the country runs at a snail's pace. And when it comes to Portugal, I think it is less complicated politically because there's one less layer of government there. So good luck with your retirement in Portugal. One here from Stephen, I must thank Spain. Just had my 90 days non-resident rights at my nice villa in Murcia, back in London now. But whilst I was in Murcia, had my abode valued. Found out it's gone up in value plus 70,000 euros. God bless you, España. It's going on the Spanish market to sell. I will drink to that. Yes, Stephen, thanks for the comment. And that just goes to show that every cloud has a silver lining. You can only stay in Spain for 90 days, but the value of your property has increased by 70,000 euros. So good luck, and I hope you get a quick sale. One here from Bumblebee. Hi, Stu, is there any more news about the Spanish developed vaccine you mentioned a few weeks ago? Has it been approved? for use. Yeah, Bumblebee, thanks for the comment. And to be honest, I haven't seen too much news around lately about the Spanish vaccine. Ipra, I think it's called. The other day on the news, I saw that they are starting clinical trials at a hospital in Valencia, and they're looking for volunteers. But apart from that, I don't have more information. I think the plan was to have it ready by the end of this year and approved for use at the beginning of next. So I'm sure we'll see in coming weeks if indeed that is the case. And finally, one here from Fernando. The price of food is going up. I'm going to hoard pay ingredients. Yeah, Fernando, thanks for the comment. And you're right, food prices are going up and people are starting to hoard products. But paella is one dish that I personally would not hoard products for, but each to their own. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.